Most gardeners spend months waiting for their soil to come alive. But what if I told you there's a simple everyday ingredient sitting in your kitchen right now that can wake up your soil in just a matter of days? Not weeks, not months, days. The difference between lifeless dirt and a vibrant living soil food web could be as close as a pot of rice. And the real secret lies in whether you use it raw or cooked. Healthy soil isn't about fertilizers, it's about life. Beneath the surface are countless microbes, bacteria, fungi, and other tiny workers that eat, multiply, and transform dead matter into plant available nutrients. Without them, soil turns compact, starved, and sluggish. The right food wakes them up, and rice is one of the best stimulants you can offer. But here's the question. Which form of rice actually sparks microbial activity so fast you can see changes almost overnight? Let's break it down. At its core, rice is mostly starch, stored energy in its simplest form and microbes thrive on it. They break starch down into sugars, then multiply rapidly, fueling the entire soil ecosystem. Think of starch as the fuel tank for soil biology. The catch is this. How that starch is packaged determines whether microbes can eat it immediately or whether they'll struggle to digest it for weeks. That's why raw rice and cooked rice behave completely differently once they hit the soil. Drop a handful of uncooked rice into your soil and don't expect fireworks anytime soon. Raw rice is tough. Its starch is locked inside dense granules, protected by a crystalline structure that microbes can't easily access. Only specialized fungi and bacteria can begin the breakdown process, and even then it takes patience. Over time, moisture softens the grains and fungi like Aspergillus and Penicillium colonize them, sending out enzymes that slowly break apart the starch. The process is slow, weeks or even months before you notice real change. But raw rice isn't useless. It acts like a slow-release energy bar for microbes, feeding them in the background long after other food sources are gone. For long-term soil conditioning, raw rice has its place. Just don't expect a microbial explosion right away. Now, here's where the magic happens. Once you cook rice, everything changes. Heat and water gelatinize the starch, breaking down that tight crystalline structure. The grains turn soft, the starches swell, and suddenly microbes have a buffet wide open to them. Bury cooked rice in soil, and well, within 24 to 48 hours, you'll start seeing activity. The grains may give off a sour smell, you might spot tiny bubbles as gases escape, or a fuzzy white mat of fungal growth may creep across the surface. By day three or four, the rice looks almost unrecognizable, consumed by colonies of bacteria like Bacillus and Pseudomonas that multiply explosively in the presence of easy energy. This isn't subtle. It's visible proof that cooked rice feeds soil life in days, not months. In fact, the difference is so dramatic that side-by-side -side experiments leave no doubt. Raw rice after two weeks still looks nearly intact. Cooked rice, on the other hand, vanishes into a thriving microbial mass in under a week. There is one limitation. 
Cooked rice is gone almost as quickly as it arrives. Because microbes devour it so fast, the burst of activity only lasts a week or two. After that, the food supply is used up and activity drops. That's why cooked rice works best as a short-term kickstarter. It's perfect for waking up a sluggish compost pile, energizing dead soil before planting, or giving your microbial community a quick boost. But for sustained feeding, it needs a partner. That's where raw rice and fermented rice water come in. If cooked rice is fast food and raw rice is slow release, fermented rice water is the perfect middle ground. Instead of burying grains, you make a microbial rich solution from rice rinsing water. It's simple, it's fast, and it's one of the most powerful soil inoculants you can make at home. Here's the exact recipe. Take one cup of uncooked rice and rinse it with two cups of clean water. Stir thoroughly to release the starch, then strain off the cloudy liquid. Pour this starchy water into a loosely covered jar and leave it at room temperature for three to five days. During this time, naturally occurring lactic acid bacteria multiply inside the liquid. You'll know it's ready when it develops a slightly sour smell. Before applying, dilute it properly. Mix one part fermented rice water with ten parts clean water. For example, if you have one cup of fermented liquid, blend it with ten cups of water. This diluted solution can then be poured directly into your soil or around plant roots. Unlike burying rice, there's no risk of attracting pests, and you're delivering live microbes straight where they're needed most. The real secret is knowing when to use each form. If you need an instant microbial surge, say you're prepping beds before planting or reviving a sluggish compost heap, use cooked rice. Bury it just a few inches deep so pests can't get to it. Think of it like a booster shot. If you want long-term soil conditioning, Bury raw rice deeper in the soil where it won't attract animals. Over the season, it will slowly decompose, feeding fungal networks and keeping microbial communities active long after the initial rush has faded. For regular, steady soil inoculation, fermented rice water is the easiest and safest choice. Apply it as a soil drench every two to three weeks during the growing season. It maintains balance, adds beneficial bacteria, and gives your soil life a constant refresh without overwhelming it. So, why does cooked rice create such explosive results? The answer lies in structure. Raw rice starch granules are tightly packed with high levels of amylose, making them resistant to microbial attack. Cooking breaks those granules apart, gelatinizing the starch into a gel-like form that microbes can digest instantly. It's actually the same reason cooked food spoils faster than raw food. Once the structure is broken, microbes waste no time moving in. Soil microbes are, well, opportunists. Give them an easy, accessible energy source, and they multiply like wildfire. Cooked rice removes the barriers, turning what was once locked away into an all-you-can-eat buffet. The verdict is clear. If your goal is to see soil life come alive in just days, cooked rice is the answer. It wakes up dormant microbes, 
sparks visible growth and transforms soil from lifeless to thriving almost overnight. Raw rice still has value, but it plays the long game. Fermented rice water, meanwhile, bridges the two approaches, offering quick activation and ongoing microbial support with less risk and more control. For gardeners, this isn't theory. It's a practical tool you can use right now to make your soil more fertile, your compost hotter and your plants stronger. Next time you're cooking rice, save a little for your soil. You'll be amazed at how quickly the underground world responds. At Timeless Crops Haven, we believe healthy soil is the foundation of every successful garden. If this guide gave you new ideas, share it with your fellow growers so we can all build better soil together. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more timeless tips and practical real-world gardening knowledge that makes your crops thrive.